Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Look, I know some viewers out there who watch this YouTube channel are huge Ron DeSantis fans, and you get frustrated when I make videos like this, but just understand, I don't hate Ron DeSantis. In fact, I like him. During all the 2020 craziness, Florida was a refuge of sanity for me and my entire family. I think he's arguably one of the greatest governors I've seen, period. I want that to be on the record, but the reality is, his campaign has been an utter disaster. It wasn't the right time, maybe he isn't the right guy, and the tactics that his team has been using at nearly every point have backfired spectacularly. I want to have an honest conversation. I want this to be an honest assessment of Ron DeSantis' campaign so far. I want to stick to the facts as I see them, and maybe just a little bit I'll sprinkle in some of my opinions. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, remember when Ron DeSantis' right-hand woman Christina Peshaw, Pusha, Pusha, whatever her name is, told us that leaks only happen in the Trump campaign. No, 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 they don't happen in the Ron DeSantis campaign. If anyone on his staff, campaign or official, were to leak to mainstream media, they would be fired. So nobody leaks. Um, and actually... <laughs> well, that statement has aged like old milk sitting in the hot Arizona sun. We all know that there's recently been a staff exodus at the Ron DeSantis campaign. And while it's led to a little bit of an unfortunate situation for Ron DeSantis' campaign, as I guess you could say the leaks have started. We have this article which is going mega viral in conservative circles right now. It's from semaphore.com. This belongs in the Smithsonian. Inside the meme video operation that swallowed Ron DeSantis's campaign. Senior aides to Ron DeSantis oversaw the campaign's high-risk strategy of laundering incendiary videos produced by their staff through allied anonymous Twitter accounts, a set of internal campaign communications obtained by Semaphore reveals. The videos include two that have created recurring distractions for his campaign in recent weeks, an anti-Trump video that featured a fascist symbol, and another that attacked Donald Trump for past comments supportive of LGBT rights. The meme-filled videos emerged from a signal channel called War Room creative ideas, screenshots of which were shared with Semaphore and whose authenticity was confirmed by a second source familiar with the campaign. The chat in Signal, an encrypted messaging app, offers the first clear look into the war room that has defined the Florida governor's candidacy and is presided over by his high-profile and confrontational director of rapid response, Christina Peshaw. The correspondence obtained by Semaphore also offers a glimpse of a strategy that mixes digital aggression and unsuccessful attempts to keep the campaign's own activity's secret. The messages were set to disappear after one week. Screenshots of the War Room chat, reviewed by Semaphore, included staffers praising a widely derided and since-deleted video originally posted on an anonymous account, Ron DeSantis fan cams, that included a version of the Sonnenrad, or Sonnenrad, a symbol associated with Nazi Germany. Quote, this belongs in the Smithsonian. Here are the two leaks. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have been following the Ron DeSantis campaign's online footprint. It's been an utter disaster. Mostly because I think it hasn't been authentic. You know, memes are obviously obviously a very important medium of communication, especially within right-wing circles and especially within the whole Trump sphere. But the world of online memes within the MAGA environment is authentic. You know, it's people just having fun. The Ron DeSantis campaign thought to themselves that they have to compete within this sphere. And what they did was essentially create a bunch of burner accounts. And what Christina Peshaw did is essentially create a whole slew of burner accounts where they tried to create this whole edgy meme trend inorganically for Ron DeSantis. It's backfired spectacularly. The first backfire that comes to mind was that video that was promoted by the Ron DeSantis campaign where they used AI-generated images showing Donald Trump kissing Dr. Fauci. There's, obviously, they crossed a line there. There's funny memes and funny AI-generated images. And then there's generating AI images to set a false narrative, to present them in a video as if they're real photos of Donald Trump engaging with Anthony Fauci. The campaign took a whole lot of flack for that. And then a a couple weeks later, they release a video on Twitter with actual Nazi symbolism. A complete train wreck. There's no other way to describe it. If the Trump campaign had done the same thing, my view would stay the same. But the reality is that Donald Trump uses memes as a currency in a way, but he's not creating the memes. 
They're created from online accounts like Carpe Donctum, Declaration of Memes, The Right to Bear Memes, the list goes on and on. It's an actual subculture and not this sort of fake inorganic abomination. It's a mistake. It's honestly a boomer mistake. It's like that meme with that famous actor, I forget his name. He's like 50 years old showing up to the high school with a skateboard on his back. How do you do, fellow kids? It's the same kind of concept. How do you do, fellow memers? We're part of this subculture too. Clearly that strategy was never gonna end well and it's backfiring big time. And honestly, I think every action that Ron DeSantis has taken so far has backfired. His team was frankly dishonest about the launch of his campaign. Again, Christina Peshaw back in April of 2022 said this. Conservatives and people in general are hungry for leaders who will fight for them. We saw it with President Trump. We, saw, we see it now with Governor DeSantis in this great state, how he stands up for our rights to the point people are talking about him running for president in 2024. No, I mean, he, I think he needs to stay here in our state and he's totally focused on our state. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I think he would be a great president, but I'm selfish. I care about this state. I think like and he's also very much focused on the people of Florida. All of this speculation and talk about like national ambitions, it's speculation. It's not anything that he has ever said. He always shuts it down, actually, from what I've seen. Um, he's like, this is third biggest state. It's growing every day. There's so much going on here that takes up his time and that he's completely dedicated to. So, um, you know, if, if you hear this kind of stuff, know that Democrats are putting out this narrative like he's just using Florida to run for president. It's not true. So um, you can shut that down. And that the suggestion was that Ron DeSantis was not running, that he was going to support the Republican candidate, which was most likely going to be Donald Trump. You know, that's what I think most Republican voters wanted was a little bit of unity, Republicans unifying behind a party leader. But instead, Ron DeSantis DeSantis decided to run, what I think many people viewed as a betrayal of Donald Trump. You know, coming from a guy who ran as a MAGA Republican, he literally created this ad. Let's play it again. Everyone knows my husband Ron DeSantis is endorsed by President Trump. He reads stories. Then Mr. Trump said, you're fired. I love that part. He's teaching Madison to talk. Make America great again. People say Ron's all Trump, but he is so much more. Big League. So good. I think Ron DeSantis showed a lack of loyalty declaring to run in the first place. And people now kind of view him as a neocon because he's running on big donor bucks and not on grassroots donations. I think if he waited till 2028, he would have had the entire Trump base behind him. He would have had that grassroots support. But he decided essentially to go with the establishment and to try to take down the grassroots Republican leader that is Donald Trump. It's not a good look if you ask me. I think it was a mistake. Then we get to the launch of his campaign. He launched on a Twitter space with no video, audio only, again some boomer radio nonsense. His announcement was low energy, I think for the most part people were really dissatisfied, even Ron DeSantis shills, and it's been a downward spiral ever since. At this point, Vivek Ramaswamy is catching up to Ron DeSantis. In fact, Vivek, or Vivek, just placed second place in an Ohio poll, with Ron DeSantis falling to third. I think it's been a campaign failure across the board. And I know, I know, a lot of Ron DeSantis people get frustrated when people say stuff like that. They want to argue, no, that's simply not true. Everything's going perfectly according to plan. Ron DeSantis firing a huge chunk of his staff is just typical restructuring. It's normal stuff. I mean, come on. You know, they're trying to convince us that everything's going absolutely swell at the Ron DeSantis camp, while at the same time they keep linking articles like this, can Ron write the ship? They keep posting articles suggesting that Ron DeSantis can turn it all around. Well, if Ron DeSantis has to turn it all around in the first place, it would imply that so far it's been a crash and burn. I think that's a pretty fair assessment. I don't think I'm speaking from a biased perspective. I don't think I'm being a shill by making this video. I'm just laying out the facts the way that I see them. I think there's been a bunch of missteps from his campaign. I think the launch was lukewarm lacking charisma. The medium that they chose to launch on was clearly a bad decision. And I think Ron DeSantis, while a great governor, I don't know if he has the charisma to really do well on the national stage. You know, recently he's trying to present himself as this hip, relatable guy, but he's a 
square. Let's be real. Not only is he physically a square, like he's kind of shaped like a box, but in these social environments, he just seems out of place. He's underperforming in primary polling data, and he's also underperforming in swing states in a head-to-head -head matchup between him and Biden. The most recent echelon data shows Ron DeSantis severely underperforming Donald Trump in swing states in a head-to-head -head matchup with Joe Biden. It's just not looking good for DeSantis, and I think that's pretty much a fact at this point. Can things turn around? Sure. But my current analysis, the current general assessment, shipwreck, train wreck, whatever you want to call it, not good. That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. You know, we'd love to have you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.